Hello everyone, happy 2020 and welcome back to Local Coma. Having recently survived the holidays, I woke up this morning and decided to unite people, probably against me, in the cause of murder. Okay, not murder per se, but killing. What's the difference though? Well, from a legal perspective, killing can be taken several different ways, including as accidental, in self-defense, while murder is generally intentional and malicious. The ultimate action novel, The Christian Bible, is chock full of instances of killing and murder, so much so that Thou Shalt Not Kill is one of the Ten Commandments which feels the most ignored. The problem here being, while we can agree killing is not a good thing, the religious text has been retranslated so many times over the years, even with any accompanying passages which might clarify, it's hard to judge whether it'll be sending anyone who kills to hell or just those who do so out of hatred. How many kids are going down for that one time they stepped on an anthill? When you hear the term the ultimate sacrifice, most people think of death. A soldier or police officer made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty, and that wound up saving lives. What if the ultimate sacrifice, though, is not the officer dying, but the act of having to kill another to protect someone? Because you prevented the murder of a woman by shooting their assailant, is your soul in turn eternally damned? You don't get to go to heaven because you felt you had no choice and stopped an evil act. Does a soldier go to hell because they defend their home from an invading force? I'm here to argue that morally and religiously, the Bible is not actually opposed to ending another's life, but rather doing so by wicked means. Otherwise, hell would be quite crowded. Keep in mind I'll be using multiple translations of the Bible for this, so not all passages mentioned are going to be 100% in line with each other. I might not be reading word for word from your copy. And of course, this is theological speculation from a human, so bear with me, I'm not perfect. Quite a few passages address the topic of killing and what happens to those who commit the act. Lots of live by the sword, die by the sword references, because God hates violence. Yet there are also several passages referring to God's wrath and the ability to use his own soldiers as a force against evil, sometimes even in conjunction with the previous concept. For our purposes, there are two I want to focus on first. Matthew 26, 52 through 53 states, Put your sword back in its place. Jesus said to him, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my Father, and he will at once place at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? Which implies a righteous or justified attack can be acceptable. Also, Jesus is an OG. I suspect this idea was also heavily perverted by the church to justify the Crusades, at least in part. Going back to the idea of God being opposed to violence, though, Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 refer to things God hates, which includes hands which shed innocent blood. Not hands which shed blood, period, but innocent blood. So between the two statements I just read, God hates violence being used against the innocent, but potentially supports the violent defense of those same people, should it become necessary. By that logic, the use of force, while not a virtue, can be forgiven, even if it ends in someone's death. One of the largest forces for violence we can find in the Bible is God himself. While we may get regretful passages which show God's remorse, we still witness the overpowering violence of the Lord when he uses fires, flood, plagues, and a number of other things to carry out what today would be considered mass genocide against those who do things he deems too far gone. The majority of the Old Testament is considerably dark compared to the New. Even with suggested divine guidance directing the authors of the books, we still see this difference in God's ways, smiting left and right until gradually God is said to have <coughs> mellowed out, making a slow transition to being more loving. We are still reminded on a regular basis, though, that it's best not to incur his wrath. What we see here is again evidence that if justice is considered a factor, it is acceptable. You could say God has a pass, or he's the exception to the rule, since he made the rule. But I don't know if that's the case necessarily. Some of you may not like where this goes, so strap in. Even God has in a way sought a kind of forgiveness for going too far according to the Bible. Going to Genesis, we see an apology of sorts from God to Noah which states that he will never again deliberately flood the entire earth in an attempt to kill or destroy 
and explains that the rainbow will be a sign of that promise. A lot of Christians look at God as being infallible, but this scenario lends to the idea that he's realized he was too violent in that case, and is making a course correction. Let's look at another passage, from Exodus 22, 2. If the thief is caught while breaking in, and is struck so that he dies, there will be no blood guiltness on his account. So, God supports castle law in Texas. Now, there are several translations which specify this is meant for catching a thief in the night, which puts an odd spin on the issue, since it then says the opposite for a thief in the daytime. Also worth noting, it discusses the idea of selling the thief as property in the case of them not being able to pay back their theft, which opens up a whole other conversation about slavery. But moving on. Fear is a serious motivation in this situation. If you wake up and see someone you don't know walking around your room, you'll probably freak out a bit and may decide to attack them. If this is the case, the passage justifies your killing of that person. Yet you may in that moment at least, hate them for the fear and confusion they've caused you. So does that remove the support? Hatred is a basis for murder more than justice, but maybe this is instead seen as something redeemed via remorse and forgiveness of that person after the fact. Various groups of Christianity hold different opinions on how forgiveness can work, but they all agree that it's a fairly important thing. So from that stem of logic, it is possible redemption could be attained via that technical cleansing of your spirit. There are numerous other parts of the Bible which support the idea of killing being acceptable, at least to some degree, with justification. It can make for a very confusing situation for those of us trying to interpret the words today, whether you consider yourself part of the clergy or a quote, casual reader. I can sit here and speculate all day as to what may have been intended by God or the people who originally wrote the words on his behalf, but I really don't know with any certainty what the answer is. Because yeah, I'm human. Which brings me around to the biggest question here. What do you believe? You don't need to be Christian to answer this question. Every religion has an opinion on the topic. Is some killing justifiable? Or is anyone taking a life going to be eternally damned? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and more important than that, have an actual conversation on the topic. No, I'm not planning on killing anyone or looking for an excuse to make it okay. This is just personal fascination with how different people can interpret the same thing. So comment down below, like the video if it got you thinking, and any subscriptions would be great if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. As always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you later.